I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your digestive process. Now, your digestive process has about three steps to it. All right, so just picture this. The first one is the stomach. The second one is the small intestine. And the third one is the large intestine. So let me explain what we mean by that. So whenever you eat anything, you what we call masticate it, which is a big fancy word for chewing. Now, after you chew it, goes down your esophagus into your stomach. First stage of digestion. Now, your stomach breaks that down into what's called ch chime, C-H-I-M-E. Now, the difference between what we believe in natural health and what we, the medical community believes in terms of Western scientific medicine is that Western scientific medicine believes that your digestion is driven by hydrochloric acid. Now, natural health, we think that hydrochloric acid is a waste product of sodium bicarbonate being produced, which means basically we believe that sodium bicarbonate digests your food. Now, we believe sodium is secreted from the walls in your stomach. Now, if you want to read a good book on this, uh, there's a brilliant book called Your Body's Many Cries for Water by Dr. Batman Gildee. I uh, call him Dr. Batman for short, or Dr. B. Um, what we all agree on, medically and naturally, is that once the food gets broken down into chime in your stomach, uh, it moves to the second stage of digestion called your small intestine. Now, your small intestine is where things get assimilated. It's got little hairs called villi. Now, these little hairs absorb all the food as they go across the villi through all 17 feet in your digestive tract. Now, what we all know and all agree on medically is that for food to be able to leave your stomach and go to the second stage, the next stage of digestion in the small intestine, the pH needs to be at 8.4 or above. Now, if you remember the scale from 0 to 14, 7 is neutral. So if it needs to be at a pH of 8.4, this means that the food needs to be slightly, or the substance in your stomach needs to be slightly alkaline. So in order to do that, the top of the small intestine called the duodenum produces something called sodium bicarbonate, which is actually made in the pancreas, which... which leads us in natural health to say that your whole digestive tract needs sodium. It doesn't just start in the small intestine, but indeed the small intestine, we believe, is a backup organ. Right? Does that make sense? It's a backup organ. Organ. So things go through your sodium, through your stomach, which we call a sodium organ, where sodium is secreted through the walls where it's digestive and broken down. Now, if there's not enough sodium bicarbonate to proceed to the next stage of digestion, then things tend to sit there. They tend to go outwards or upwards. Now, there's a little muscle at the top of your esophagus, at the bottom of your esophagus rather, that keeps food in your stomach called the esophageal sphincter. Now, we believe this pops back open and this is what's called causes acid reflux. And if you're on a medication like Nexium or Lozec, which is for digestion, it actually raises the pH of the stomach up to about 6.8. It's a very slightly acid. And this is because the medical community believes that obviously all this bloating comes from excess acid, but because of this incorrect belief that acid digests food, they still try and keep the stomach acid. So instead we'd say supplement with sodium bicarbonate, put a teaspoon in water, put a couple of teaspoons in a glass or two of water, have it 5, 10, 15 minutes before food. But more importantly is that if you know basic chemistry, something that's alkaline, when it hits something acid, they cancel each other out. There's a reaction there, isn't there? So. Sometimes if you've got a lot of stomach acid, you actually need to ease into it. You need to just have a little bit of sodium and, and build, have more sea salt on your food and just build and build and build. Now, finally, the third stage of your digestion, so we have the stomach, number one, small intestine where it's assimilated through the villi. Now, by the way, these villi are very, very, very sensitive. Everything you eat, if it's not chewed properly, if you're stressed, if it's bad for you, can damage and flatten these little hairs. It can rip them out. Um, you probably heard of gluten in wheat. It's very gluey. It rips those hairs out. It's a very, very, very sensitive organ because these villi absorb all the food nutrients straight through the walls of your small intestine directly into your bloodstream. So it's almost, you know, you could picture it as almost being intravenous. It's very, very important to watch what you eat. After it's gone through the 17 on feet of the small intestine, it then enters the final thing, which is your large intestine or your bowel or your colon. And this is what we call the sewage system of the body. This is the final few feet where things need to go out of your body. And this is where we believe death begins. This is where we believe you have a backup, where if you're constipated, things are occurring, where a lot of parasites, yeast, bacteria, fungus, mold can live. So it's very, very important to keep this clean. So that's an introduction 
to your digestive tract. I hope it's, I hope it's helpful. I hope it clarifies our belief that sodium is what drives what we call your upper digestion or stomach, how sensitive your small intestine is to what you eat, and also the importance, finally, of keeping your large intestine or colon clean so that things can move. Now, the other thing you need to know is that all this is driven by muscular waves, muscular contractions. It's called peristalsis or peristaltic action. And it, it means one muscle and another muscle fires in waves that moves things. Now, the second you eat anything, waves start at the top of your esophagus to push food down into your stomach. This, all these waves start from mouth right through to rectum, which is why we're designed to have a bowel movement about 30 minutes after every major meal. We're designed to have a bowel movement after every major meal um, because once these esophagus start moving up above, it starts stimulating things in the lower digestion, which means we literally start eliminating uh, backlogs of meals.